What's up, Active Lifers? Welcome back to the Active Life Podcast. I'm Dr. Sean Pestuch, and I'm your host. And today, I am going to challenge the fitness industry on what anybody in it will tell you is the most important thing that somebody does if they want to be successful. That thing that they say people need to do is care. They say if you want to be successful in the fitness industry, you need to care. I'm going to challenge that today. I'm going to challenge it because I don't think it's enough. I think it's lazy. I think it lowers the barrier to entry so low that the standard of the industry is unacceptable. It allows anybody who is a good person with good intentions and no commitment at all to consider themselves excellent at something that is too important to the people who are enrolling in it to be anything less than excellent. When people say you need to care, what does that mean? Care about what? Care about who? Care about them how? If you're a gym owner and you believe that the most important thing that you do is care about the staff, what do you think must be true for you to actually exemplify caring? Liking them as a person is one thing. Being a shoulder for them to lean on when things are bad in their life is another thing. And making sure that the business in which they dedicate themselves, your business, can create the kind of life for them that they want to live. Well, that's a whole different ball of wax. You see, you can be a great person and not care enough about your business or the people in it to be great for the fitness industry. And you can be a great person without providing great opportunities for other people. But I don't believe that you can be a great fitness professional, especially not a great fitness business owner, without taking into consideration what success for everybody else involved looks like, and then refusing to do anything for them that will not bring that down. I want to give you a very real example that I experienced when I was in clinical practice back in 2015. A woman walked into my clinic, and she told me that she just wanted to lose 20 pounds, and whenever she worked out, her back would hurt. And so she couldn't work out. And she needed to be able to work out to lose 20 pounds. I asked her why she wanted to lose 20 pounds. And she told me that, you know, it was just the summer was coming and she just wanted to be able to look better in a bathing suit. And I said, well, okay, that's, that's, that's reasonable. Um, what we're going to do here in the clinic is going to take some significant money and some significant time. And I want to ensure that the reason why you're doing it is strong enough for you to put that money and that time into this. Cause I don't want to take any of your money if we're not going to be successful. So is this the first year that you've wanted to look better in a bathing suit? And she knew where I was going with it. And she started to break down crying. I'm like, what's going on? Why are you, why are you crying? And she told me the reason why she was crying was because the real reason why she wanted to lose 20 pounds is because she lacked the confidence to take her shirt off when she went to the beach And her daughter was turning seven years old, was no longer going to believe her when she told her daughter that mommy was cold. And so she had to keep her shirt on at the beach. And she didn't want to lie to her daughter anymore. So she wanted to be able to get out of back pain and exercise so that she could lose 20 pounds so that she could be a role model for her daughter. I'm getting the chills thinking about the moment I remember it vividly. Now, I wasn't perfect. I'm still not perfect. But one of the things that I I would like to say I was very good at was disallowing people who were going to pay me money from paying me money without the expectation that I could give them what they were paying for in return. And so what that meant for this woman was that she was going to need to come to my clinic three days a week for three to four weeks at 
$75 a pop for a 15 minute visit. And then she was going to need to learn how to exercise in the gym. And that was going to require some personal training, which could cost her a few thousand dollars. And then she was going to need ongoing support. And she was going to need to hire a nutrition coach who was not me because I didn't do that well. And I still don't. And so I wanted this woman to understand that she was looking at most likely a five figure investment because it wasn't enough to just help her lose 20 pounds. She needed to be able to have control over the way that her body looked, felt, and performed at any given time. And that requires education. It requires new habits. It requires new thought. I did a really good job by that woman. I didn't always do as good of a job as I did for her. But that, to me, is what caring looks like in this instance. It's not about selling her what she would have been willing to buy and being okay with her not getting what I know she came for. That's not acceptable. And there was a period in my career when I would have liked to have considered myself great, and I wasn't. That's the truth. It was the early days of the gym, and... I would sell anybody a membership because I believed so strongly in, at the time, the CrossFit methodology to help people that I believed it didn't matter who you were. If you walked through that door, I could help you. All you needed to do was sign up. It was genuine. I cared about the people who came. I believed I could help the people who came. And I genuinely wanted everybody who showed up to enroll because I genuinely believed that I could make all of their lives better. It wasn't until years of doing that and looking back and reflecting on all of the people who had canceled their memberships, all of the people who I still knew, who had told me that the reason why they weren't coming to the gym anymore was, for example, I loved working out there, but the reason why I signed up was so I could play beach volleyball on Saturday mornings. And one morning I went to get out of my beach chair and my back was bothering me. My shoulders were sore and I couldn't play beach volleyball. What was the point of going to the gym if I went to the gym to get better and more able to play beach volleyball, but I couldn't do it. So I quit. These are people who are still my friends to this day. I care about them, but I didn't care about them enough at the time, I didn't know how to care about them enough at the time to only sell them something that would legitimately solve their problem predictably. You wouldn't go to a surgeon who was a really good surgeon but did not care about their patients because you know that there's a moment on the table when something could go wrong and you need that person to care about you. You wouldn't hire the lawyer who was a really good lawyer but didn't care about their clients because you know that something could go wrong in your case and if they don't care about the outcome for you, they're not going to do what you need them to do. Caring is a prerequisite to anything, but it is not the standard. It is not the standard. Caring to me, if you're going to really, if we're going to make caring the standard, let's just play this hypothetical game for a second. Let's just pretend that we're going to make caring the standard. What must be true for you to care? What must be true for you to demonstrate that you care? A member comes to you and tells you that they have an achy shoulder and they would like their shoulder to feel better and they would like to be able to continue working out. Can you help them? Should I join? Do you tell that person no when you don't know how to help their shoulder? Do you tell them yes and then go out and get the education to help their shoulder? What do you do? The person who cares only considers what that member or their prospective member needs and whether they can deliver it or not. Does the gym owner who requires that all of their staff are full-time in the gym so that they can ask that staff, require that staff to dedicate their everything to becoming even better versions of themselves through education, development, intentional practice, staff meetings, 
vulnerable conversations. If the gym owner who does that doesn't care more than the gym owner who allows people to participate as part-time coaches in the gym while they teach full-time, they're firefighters full-time, they're police officers full-time, they're lawyers full-time, then I don't know what world we live in. Because if you care about the members who come into your gym, you want to give them the absolute best that you can possibly give them. And full-time you is better than part-time you at anything. The same is true for the coaches who work in your gym. Full-time them would be better than part-time them at the same task. That's an undeniable fact. So why allow people part-time? Why allow people to do what you make your living, their hobby? How is that caring? It doesn't matter that you're a nice person. It doesn't matter that they're nice people. That's not fair to your members. How is it caring for your staff if there's no money for them? If you ask them to be full-time, but you pay them part-time because you're afraid to ask membership for enough money to pay them full-time. How is that caring about the staff? Let's take it a step further. How is that caring about the members? Hypothetically speaking, ask yourself this series of questions. Would your gym be better, money aside, would your gym be better for the members if all of the coaches in the gym were full-time and dedicated 10 hours a month to professional development to improve their ability to coach the members in the gym to the goals that they sign up for? Would it be better if you could do that than it is right now? Yes or no? Okay. Would the members get their results more quickly? Yes or no? Okay. Would the members get their results more consistently? Yes or no? Okay. Would that be a gym worth more money to the member than the one that you're running today? Yes or no? Okay. If you answered yes to all of those questions, then you have awareness that you could be caring for people more. But now what happens is you ask yourself, well, what if they can't afford that or they won't pay for that? Then I find myself in a situation where they can't come at all. And how am I caring about them then? Reasonable question. The answer to which is because you are acknowledging that you do not want to give them substandard service. You do not want to run a business in which the staff can't make a career of it and thus commit themselves to excellence. You don't want to run a business where you can't promise people the results that they are signing up for. You don't want to run a business where you can't ensure that all of the staff members are held accountable to holding all of the members accountable. When you can get yourself to that place that that's what you care about, that's what caring is, you understand that underpricing what you do so that people can afford to come is valuing money over valuing people. I would rather pay you $0 to get zero results than pay you $150 to get very few results. And I would rather pay you $500 or $1,000 to get life-changing results. And you know what the great thing is? I don't have to do it for my entire life. As a member of your gym, if you're charging me $500 a month, I don't have to be a member forever to get the best results. Because you damn well better be getting me great results quickly at that kind of a price point. And now you're asking yourself, well, what if not everybody in my town can afford that? And you know what? They can't. They can't. So the conversation you need to have with yourself is, do you want to be able to help people deeply or do you want to be able to help many people, maybe? Do you want to be able to assuredly help some people deeply? Or do you want to be able to help many people, maybe? Is it caring when somebody joins your gym and they pay you all that money and four months later nothing has changed for them? Is that caring? 
I'll take it a step further. What if they paid you and instead of coming to the gym three to four days a week, like you told them they should, they're only coming to the gym once or twice a week. And instead of eating healthy, clean diet, they're eating all kinds of processed foods and you don't intervene because you don't have the time because they're not paying enough money to sit down with you one-on-one to help them actually solve their issue. And four, five, six months later, they're still in your gym. Nothing has changed, but they like coming. So you let them continue coming. Is that caring? Is that, is that, is that caring? Sending people birthday cards is great. Being the person that people can come to when something is wrong is great. Being the person who can have a vulnerable conversation with other people is great. It's the entry. That's the cost of entry. But now once you're in the door, in order to stay, there needs to be a standard that we require in the fitness industry that is more than this person cares. Let's define the word. Let's make it more than just a word that's platitude thrown around. They need to care. He cares. Cares about what? Cares about what? I was talking to a gym owner today who's not a client, who I like very much. And there are three staff members in his gym who claim to care. They care about him, about the members, about the community. And they have their own personal fitness businesses on the side. And he's asked them to commit to the gym. And he's offered them money to commit to the gym. But they want to do things on the side and use the gym as a hedge. If they get to making enough money in the gym, then they'll commit completely to the gym, but not until they're making enough money there. That's not how it works. That's not how it works. Gym owners, hear me now. People who tell you that don't care about the problem that you are trying to solve. They care about the problem that they are trying to solve. And the problem that they are trying to solve is they want to make enough money today and they're willing to forfeit the future to do it. That's the reality. The other side of that, gym owners, is that you must create an environment in which there is a reasonable level of certainty that they're going to be successful if they come and work for you full time. You have to provide that. That's caring about the staff. And then staff members, if you're a coach in a gym, bring your all. Bring your all. If the gym owner provides you an opportunity to be successful in that business, both from a financial and a fulfillment perspective, then bring your all. You owe it to the members. You owe it to the gym owner. You own it to yourself. You care. What does that mean? Care about what? Care about what? Gym owners, caring means knowing who hasn't come to the gym yet this week. Caring means knowing exactly how many members you lost last month and why they left and what you could have done to help them better. Caring means knowing that A staff member needs to be able to work a certain hour in the day because they have to get home to their kids and they need to make enough money in the hours that they are there to support those same kids and being able to tell them truthfully, I believe you can do that here or I believe that you won't be able to do that here. Be honest with people. That is caring. Create the career path for people. That is caring. Hold people to a standard. That is caring. Making the place fun. That's not caring. That's not caring. Making it easy for everybody. That's not caring. In the fitness industry, I believe that winning is helping people achieve their goals and then helping them set the next one and making sure that they can achieve that too. 
whether that's the staff in the business or the members in the business. That's what winning looks like in the gym. Too often, I believe that fitness businesses, gyms, prioritize fun. They prioritize making sure that it's affordable for everybody. They prioritize gimmicky marketing and upfront sales and all this bullshit just to make sure that there's enough money in the business and then masquerade as caring. I'm not perfect. I, I have the good fortune of when I talk to you about all of this stuff, the person I am most talking to is the, the version of me that didn't know this stuff when I did it. There is no judgment for you as I talk about this. I'm giving you the awareness that I didn't have when I was in the mix. I see great gym owners every single day who work with us at Active Life in our pro path, who dedicate their lives to being exceptional, not only for themselves or their family, but for the staff in the gym and for the members in the gym. They understand that making a lot of money is just the scoreboard of doing great work. And there's nothing wrong with it. In fact, it's something to strive for. And they can do that all while caring about everybody in the business. I get to work with great coaches every day who are transitioning to becoming professionals, active life professionals in our ALP curriculum. Many of them coaches in the gyms who are in ProPath. The way that they care for their clients, the wins that they share in our meetings... We had a coach last week who shared a win. She shared two, the same coach. One of them was one of her first personal training clients who ever came to the gym, lost 100 pounds and qualified for the United States Marines and ships off for boot camp in a week. That is a huge life-changing win for that person. She didn't talk about how much money she made off of him. But you bet your ass he paid to be there. Another one of her clients exited the women's area of the gym. There's a, the gym that we're talking about has a women's area only. This woman left that area of the gym on her own and went and trained in the big room where everybody looks at you. I want you to imagine this big room where there's a track that goes around the top and down below is where all the free weights are, the platforms, the open turf space, the sleds. She went and worked out in there. That is scary, and she did it anyway. It's a huge win. She didn't talk about the money that that member made her, but you bet your ass that member paid. The gym owner, that same gym owner, knew that one of the coaches in the business couldn't give him full-time effort because he didn't have enough pay coming to him in the gym to be full-time. And so the gym owner created an opportunity where he would pay him on a probationary period so that he could commit the time necessary to be in the gym to earn the revenue coaching to be full-time. That's an owner who gives a shit about his staff. That's caring. That's caring on all three levels. That's what excellence looks like. We have a gym owner whose staff had a little bit of financial scarcity because they started charging a premium. And so the gym owner took the staff members out to the most expensive restaurant in town for dinner to show them what it's like to be taken care of in a way where every little detail is important. And afterwards, they turned that experience into a staff meeting, which they discussed what did you learn about what you get when, when there's a premium price tag on something? And they understood everybody in that business cared about their experience. So you think the chef in that restaurant doesn't have to practice being a great chef? 
You think the waiters don't have to memorize the menu and practice every day what's on it? You think the host doesn't have to walk a certain way to the table? You think the way they answer the phone isn't exactly premeditated? Of course it is. That's caring. That's caring. A lot of you like to throw shade at companies like Planet Fitness. Planet Fitness is pulling the whole industry down. That place sucks. Yada, yada, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. I don't even disagree with you. Planet Fitness is socialism for fitness. 10 bucks a month. Let's hope that nobody comes. But those who show up, they're going to get more than $10 worth of value because a lot of people are contributing to their, their service. The people who use it get what they pay for. They get more than what they pay for. It works. It works for those people. But now, I want you to look at that in your own business. How many people who join your gym, who despite everybody in your staff and you caring, are not getting what they paid for? Don't you care about that? Isn't that what caring is? How comfortable would you be to sit down with every member of your gym and ask them, what was the goal you had when you came? Have you achieved it? And to all of them who say no, ask them, well then, why are you still a member here? Would you be comfortable doing that? If you wouldn't be comfortable doing that, I ask you one more time, what the fuck are we talking about? Why is caring, caring, the standard of excellence in the industry? Everybody gets to say that they care, but what does it mean? I'll leave you with this. I'm no different than you. I'm not better than you. I've just gone through some deep, dark shit. And I've looked at the stuff that I was doing myself and decided that it wasn't good enough. And decided that I didn't want to keep doing things that way. And when I was younger, I had one experience in my life in which I got bullied and it left a it left a resonant mark on my brain. And when I see people signing up for services, whether it's you as a gym owner signing up to work with a mentorship company that doesn't provide you support and then nothing changes, or it's you as a gym owner allowing people to sign up for your gym and then they don't get the support that they need so nothing changes, or it's staff members deciding that they're going to work in your gym but not give it their all and so nothing changes for them or for you. I get flashbacks to that bullying moment. That's the truth. That's where my chip comes from. I believe that's bullying. And if you're going to try to tell me that the bully cares a lot, we're going to have a conversation that you're not going to like. I want you to be great. I want you to be happy. I want you to be wealthy. I want you to be free. I want you to be whatever you want to be. And I just think that saying that caring is the standard isn't enough to do that. Turn pro. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Active Life Podcast. Remember, if you feel inspired by our vision to humanize the healthcare industry, professionalize the fitness industry, and empower individuals to live their lives, to reclaim their physical freedom, to develop careers, helping people reclaim their physical freedom. All you need to do is head to activelifeprofessional.com, find the appropriate link that represents you, and get in contact. We'll see you there.